In a recent Ameriprise study, 83% of people surveyed said that they wanted to be able to leave an inheritance for loved ones. However, only 64% of those surveyed felt that they were prepared and ready to do that. So what this means is that if you want to leave something for loved ones, you might be unable to do it and they might be left with stress and bills and whatnot if you don't get proactive. With that in mind, I want to share a recent success story that one of our full life experts, Denise Bobier, had with one of her clients where she set up a cash value second to die policy. And there were some factors in that. One, the husband had some health concerns. They were able to overcome that with the second to die and really multiply more than double the money that was available for the inheritance. So excited to jump into this with Denise. And then at the end of this video, I'll pop back in. If this applies to you, I'll give you some key action steps that you can take. Take it away, Denise. Thanks for the intro, Steve. Denise Poivet here from Insurance and Estates. Today, I wanted to show you um, an example of how one of our clients and his spouse created a legacy for their children and their grandchildren. Their main goal was when they passed away, they wanted to provide security for not only their two children, but also their four grandchildren. They had $50,000 annually available from their portfolio to invest for about 15 years. These funds were specifically earmarked to leave to their family. We decided a second to die policy was the best vehicle to accomplish these goals. Firstly, because neither spouse was dependent on a death benefit from the passing spouse in order to maintain their current lifestyle. Secondly, this was a good option for them because the husband had some health challenges and underwriting for these policies is much more lenient on health issues when there are two lives involved and one of them is in good health. Thirdly, they wanted the death benefit to go to their beneficiaries after, after both of them had passed. So let's just look at what 50,000 annually for the desired 15 years of fundings looks like for this couple. In this illustration, the husband is 64 years old and the wife is 60 years old. The husband has some health issues. The wife is in good health. So he's rated standard and she is going to be rated preferred. The initial death benefit is a little over a million dollars. They're putting in 50,000 year one to year 15. Their goal is to put the 50,000 in each year. However, they are not required to fund the entire 50,000 each year. They can reduce that amount down to 30. And if something unexpected happens and they're not able to fund it one year, they can choose to implement a premium offset and let the cash value pay the premium. So that's just one of the great safety nets in these types of vehicles. But I want to quickly look at year 10. So in 10 years, they have a cash value that is now greater than the contributions that they have made. So their cash value is 542. They have contributed 500. But more importantly, their death benefit has basically tripled, a little bit more than tripled. And that's their goal. They want to maximize that legacy. They're not really concerned about the cash value because it's the death benefit that they want to leave to their family. At the end of 15 years, they have a death benefit of 1.9 million. They have put 750 into the plan and their cash value is 953. At the end of 15 years, they have a choice. They can do a reduced paid up, which is illustrated here, or they can continue to fund it, but they have chosen to do a reduced paid up. So basically we're gonna shut this off, no more premiums are due. Their death benefit is gonna be reduced from 1.9 million down to 1.4. However, the death benefit will continue to increase, even though no more premiums are going in because the cash value is still earning interest and dividends. This growth is represented in this death benefit. So they have funded the policy for 15 years as planned, and now they have pretty much more than tripled their, their money to leave um, at, to their family. Another great safety net per se is if either one of them ever needs health care, they can either borrow from their cash value to help with those expenses, or if one of them has passed and there's only one remaining spouse on the policy, that remaining spouse can implement the chronic illness rider that is automatically attached to this policy, which will help with those health care expenses. 
if the surviving insured is ever diagnosed with a terminal illness, which is less than 12 months to live, he or she would have the option to implement the accelerated death benefit rider that is also attached to this policy. And basically it's advancing part of their cash value for whatever they need, they need it for. So as you can see, by using a second to die policy, they are accomplishing their legacy goal, all while having choices and flexibility along the way. We all know that life does not always go as we plan. And I really hope that this was helpful and gave you some great ideas on how to maximize your legacy. And I will now turn it back to Steve to give you a quick recap. Well, thanks, Denise. Terrific example. So the keys there, the husband and wife in that case did not need the death benefit. That's important with a second to die. If the husband would have passed sooner, the wife could continue to fund that policy and continue to add to the inheritance amount. They did a 50,000 annual premium over 15 years. At year 10, the cash value in the policy was greater than what they had put in. At year 15, there was 1.5 million in the policy and they had put 750,000 in at that point. And that death benefit just continued to grow through the duration of the policy. In year 15, the cash value was also 953,000. That money, it's really critical to know, is available for living benefits. So things like long-term care costs, terminal illness, those kinds of things, cash value can be utilized for that. Another key factor in this is that a reduced paid up can be done at any time. So if for some reason the couple decided they couldn't afford the ongoing premiums, they could do a reduced paid up and still have that death benefit available for loved ones. I encourage you, if legacy planning is on your mind, you can get your own numbers by scheduling with Denise. Wherever you're watching, there's a calendar link below to schedule. If you do have questions, leave it in the comments section. We do respond to all comments as long as you keep it classy. We, we look at everything and invite you to do that. Thanks so much for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.